Okay, let's start today. This is the first day for our demo chat. Uh, this chat is going to be hosted by Jin Yao and Kim Fox. I am Jean. Uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology. I'm a certified pre-diabetes prevention specialist and wellness coach. I have over 25 years experience in biomedical research, business consulting and investment in healthcare industry at various position. Hi, and I'm Kim. And so I'm a registered dietitian. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I am a certified diabetes care and education specialist. And I'm also certified in functional uh, as a functional medicine nutrition specialist. So um, that's my background. Thank you, Kim. So this uh, demo chat is going to be a 50 minutes online chat. We are going to talk about current hot topics in health and lifestyle. 2020 and 21 and 2021 COVID-19 draws a heavy black mark in history. When a new disease emerges, there is a possibility of a pandemic, which is a worldwide spread of the disease. Besides COVID-19, there have been multiple pandemic and epidemic outbreaks in recent history. Kim, would you tell me what other outbreaks are? Oh, let's see. I know that there is SARS. I know that there is MERS. Um, I know that there was swine flu, um, Ebola. Um, how's that? Let's check. <laughs> so we have experienced seven notable epidemic like COVID-19 since 1918. Some of the, these epidemics have been classified as pandemics and all of them have had a serious effect on the human population in some way. So look at this, this 1918 pandemic flu, we also call it Spanish flu, give, give a deaths of 50 or 100 million. So that is the worst in the history. Uh, here I mentioned epidemics and the pandemics. Do you know the difference? I think an epidemic just occurs maybe in a particular area or areas and a pandemic is worldwide or much more larger spread, infects a lot more people. Uh, yes, you are right. So an epidemic is the spread of a, a disease in a community or, or, or region over a specific amount of time. Epidemics can vary based on the location of the disease, how much of the population has been exposed and more. A pandemic is a type of epidemic that has spread to at least three countries within the WHO region. So you're right. Uh, since Spanish flu is a deadliest pandemic in the past century, let's see the Spanish flu today. Spanish flu is also known as the 1918 flu pandemic. Was an unusually deadly influenza pandemic caused by the H1N1 influenza A virus, lasting from February 1918 to April 1920. It infected 500 million people, about a third of the world's population at the time, in four successive waves. The death toll is typically estimated to have been somewhere between 20 million and 50 million, possibly high of 100 million. This picture shows Seattle play police wearing masks in December, 1918. 
the first observations of illness and the mortality were documented in the United States. And, and then in the port of uh, Brest, France, and then in Germany, finally in the United Kingdom. Uh, but some people also mentioned Spanish flu might come comes from World War One trench trenches because that time is during World War World War One. Uh, here shows a nurse wears a cloth mask while treating a patient in Washington D.C. Uh, to maintain morals, World War One censors minimized these early reports. Newspapers were free to report the epidemic's effects in neutral Spain, such as the grave illness of King Af Alfonso XIII. And these stories created the false impression of Spain uh, as especially hard hit. This gave rise to the name Spanish flu. So it didn't originate in Spain is what you're saying. You are correct. Okay. This graph shows the difference between the influenza mortality age distributions of the 1918 epidemic and the normal epidemics uh, death per 100,000 persons in each age group in US. For the interpandemic years 1911 to 1917, it shows a dashed line, and the pandemic year 1918, it shows a solid line. We see that comparing to COVID-19, the younger group from 15 to 44 years old got a big loss during 1918 pandemic. In US, the deaths from Spanish flu was 675,000. US soldiers died from World War I were 116,000. US soldiers died from all 20th century combined were over 619,000. So the total deaths in US from Spanish flu was over the deaths of US soldiers from all 20th century combined. Spanish flu was caused by influenza virus. COVID-19 caused by coronavirus. So what is coronavirus? Let's talk about this coronavirus next time. So do you think that why there was a bigger uh, a people that were affected with the Spanish flu, do you think that that's more related what to the types of conditions that people had? They just didn't have the type of medical knowledge or what would you attribute those higher numbers to than what we are seeing today? Uh, about 100 years ago, definitely, people don't know much about the uh, virus. At that time, virus was not, uh, people didn't realize there was a virus. So about, uh, and then later after, after that, people realized, oh, do did more research, they found virus. And then after 20 years, they get the first vaccine of this influenza virus. So later, uh, and uh, people get more protection from vaccine. I found it was interesting that, you know, people were still, you know, kind of masking up just like we are doing today. But then you certainly on some of those slides that you showed, you can certainly see how that spread of infection could also uh, occur more quickly because of how close everybody was and maybe there was just a thin sheet or there was bed against bed against bed. So you can see that we've learned, you know, a lot over the years on how quickly uh, these types of bacteria and viruses can quickly spread. Yes, at that time, uh, people, people didn't realize this virus and bacteria, those are very small. Mm -hmm. very small. So you, you can see from that picture, uh, people wear the mask, but those masks are just a cloth. 
Yeah. So they made a clause, but there's, there's lots of holes in the clause. It won't uh, prevent uh, virus to get through it. So uh, people just think, oh, okay, that might be helpful. It, 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 it will be helpful if there's a patient, if, if he wants to sneeze, so that can prevent the uh, spread of the virus. But, uh, but right now we have uh, like N95, so that's much better. So we have about seven minutes left. So do we uh, wanna open it up to see if anybody else has got any uh, questions or maybe they know something more uh, historically with what our topic is today, if they have some more information or what their thoughts are? Yeah, sure, please, yeah. So do we have anybody on Facebook? I will check. Yeah, please check. Because that's what the goal of, of us wanting to do this is, is to provide some information and then uh, open it up to be able for others to be able to share their thoughts, their opinions, ask questions, see what some topics of interest might be for them. And then that would be certainly things that we would love to dig deeper in and um, you know, provide some of the information and give you an opportunity to share. And whether you agree or disagree, that's your opinion. And even Jean and I don't agree on some things, but we're able to express our, our thoughts and our, our views and carry on. So we were just hoping to be able to open this up to let others in the community be able to do the same. So I don't think I have see anybody that is has any questions at this point. So uh, if not, um, thank you for that information that you provided for us, Jean. And uh, as Jean said, next time um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about coronavirus, but I'm going to be providing some little known interesting facts that I've come across when I was doing some of my research on the topic. And before we leave, because we want this to be kind of a, a, a maybe a bright spot or a little change in your day, is that we are hoping that you can just spend some time, close your eyes, and uh, just take three deep, small breaths. If you want to continue doing more than that, that's fine. And then after you've done that, if you can think of something that has been great that's happened earlier in your day or something that you are thankful for or appreciative for, I think that's going to be a great way for you to spend the rest of your afternoon feeling uh, refreshed. So again, I hope that you are able to join us on Thursday at noon, same time, same place. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kim. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Bye. Bye.